The Rangers defeat the Islanders at Madison Square Garden, and this was a fun one. I was lucky enough to be in attendance for this game. This was the first game that I was at this season, and it was it was a fun atmosphere. A lot of Islander fans, of course, a lot of Ranger fans, being that it was at home, and the Rangers deserved to win this game. They were the better team. They outplayed the Islanders. The Islanders took a lot of penalties. The Rangers really didn't make them pay for that. They did score one power play goal, but the Rangers were able to to just stick with it and get it done. And the Rangers played a really, specifically Rangers played a very good third period. They trailed going into the third, but they won the game. And they should feel good about themselves heading into the Christmas break. They have won eight of their last nine after things were looking not so good. They've really turned things around. And give Gerard Gallant credit, someone who I was starting to become very critical of. Tonight he makes a very underrated line change, one in which I think it was one in which we were hoping for, one that I don't think will necessarily stick, but he swapped Kraftsov and Goodrow. So Kraftsov ends up playing with Panarin and Zibanejad, and Goodrow is on the fourth line technically, but it was a really good line with... Brodzinski and Gauthier. Sammy Blay was a healthy scratch. It's what we had expected after what happened against the Penguins. And I would hope and expect that to continue. So, and Libor Hayek continues to be a healthy scratch. And you know what? Ben Harper has actually been all right. I, I don't, do I think if the Rangers make the playoffs that Harper or Hayek will be really like the sixth defenseman? I'd like to think not. But for the for the here and now, you know, Harper's been all right. He had an assist. Originally, he was given credit for two assists, but they must have made a change, and so he's only uh, down for one. But the Rangers really, and they hit a lot of posts in this game, too. It's funny, Igor Shosturkin, who you, you can't really, the Barzell goal, you, you wanted to make a breakaway save, but you can't kill him for that one. The third one, the Romanov goal, it sucks that it was from long distance. He Schneider probably screened him. But what I'm trying to get at is that Shesterkin against the Islanders like just hasn't really been great for whatever the reason. And tonight, that kind of continued. And, you know, Sorokin's kind of gotten the better of that matchup. Now, it, it hasn't always been head-to-head. But the Rangers, you know, really broke through versus Sorokin. He made some good saves along the way. But the Rangers finally broke through. And it was really the depth pieces tonight as I had mentioned Gauthier and Goodrow they connected on a couple of goals that were really big and then Capo Caco scores the game-winning goal with less than three minutes to go atoning for a mistake that he made on the Barzell goal earlier really Caco held on the puck for way too long Bailey kind of chips it away from Caco and Barzell scores so it, it feels good that Caco you know, didn't get too down on himself. And apparently Crotter and Goodrow were talking to him on the bench and trying to, you know, pump him up. And whether that whether it was Kako on his own or with the help of his teammates, he was able to, to score the all-important game-winning goal. And, and that was big. I think back to that Ranger Islander game earlier in this, you know, I guess about a month ago now when the Rangers were struggling. And it was a game the Rangers should have won. They were up 3-1 going to the third, and they got no points out of it. Now, does this fully make up for it? No. But it's something. And this was the last game of the year against the Islanders. I, I can't stress enough how big that is. You don't want to get swept. You don't want to get swept. The game at the Islanders in Belmont, the Islanders were the better team in that one. Halak was in that. Like, the Rangers could get nothing going. But the Garden games, the Rangers really should have come away with two wins, but at least they get this one. Like I said, they were the better team. I think an Islander fan would agree to that. Did the Islanders have a chance to win? Of course. The Islanders led. Rangers didn't take the lead. Rangers took the lead for the first time at 17-13 of the third period. And the Islanders did have one stretch in the third where, out of nowhere, they were hitting posts. I know JP, J, JG Pajot hit one, and they, they were there was a little bit of a flurry there. And we've seen that before where all of a sudden the Islanders kind of scored that devastating, devastating goal against the Rangers late in the game, but it didn't happen here. So for the Rangers, they you know start out on a power play as Anders Lee slashes Ryan Lindgren at 126, 
but the Rangers power play unsuccessful. And, and the chances were there, but some power plays were better than others. But ultimately, not a great night result-wise. The Rangers were one for six. Could have been worse, but you definitely were hoping for a little bit more. So the Rangers don't score there. Then Johnny Brodzinski trip, trips Scott Mayfield at 358, but the Rangers' PK does a nice job. And so we remain scoreless until Anders Lee gives the Islanders a one nothing lead. It's his 11th goal of the year from Romanov and Dobson. This is a play where Lee just kind of shoots it towards the net. It goes off for Ryan Lindgren's skate and through Shesterkin. So that, that's an unfortunate break. Lindgren, who, you know, I, I'm not sure what else he could have done, but it does go off Lindgren, and it's a one nothing Islander lead. Then, the, then Scott Mayfield holds Artemi Panarin at 14-16. Then the Rangers have a little bit of a five-on-three, as at 15-32, Noah Dobson takes delay a game penalty. The first penalty expires, and with less than 20 seconds of the Dobson delay game, the Rangers do score. That was big. You know, you don't score there after a five-on-three. That's tough, but they do score. It's Panarin. His ninth goal of the season from Zabanajad and Fox. So a nice setup. Panarin kind of in that Zabanajad spot. They switched places. And Panarin with the one-timer stroking a little bit late, getting over from his left to right. And Panarin scores. And the Rangers tied up at one. So we're all tied up at one going to the second. In the second is where Kako makes that really bad turnover. And he's a lot. He's a pretty responsible player. He doesn't usually make mistakes like that. But it is Barzell who scores his fifth goal of the season, and it's Josh Bailey with the assist as he makes that poke check to get it away from Kako, and the Islanders take a 2-1 to lead right there. Then the Rangers score kind of a similar goal. I mean, it's a breakaway goal themselves, and it's Julian Gauthier, who never deserved to be taken out of the lineup. He was a healthy scratch in the last three games. But... It wasn't anything that he had done wrong, really. And this is coming from someone who hasn't really been the biggest Julian Gauthier fan. Like, certainly the last couple years, especially last season, I was kind of done with him. And it's a great story that he was waived, went through waivers, was sent down to Hartford, did a nice job there, and has since been called up and has really made contributions. And the Rangers tied up. Really a great pass by Barkley Goodrow. Nice saucer pass, catches Goodrow in stride. And a little soft backhand five hole past Sorokin, and the Rangers tied up at two. So at 5:30, we're tied. And then unfortunately, though, soon thereafter, the Islanders take a 3-2 lead as it's Romanov scoring his first as an Islander from Barzell. So Barzell, and it looks like from my perspective, like he's such a threat offensively, but there are defensive shortcomings for Matt Barzell which happened later on, but he really is a force for the Islanders in the offensive zone, you know, when he's playing smart. But Romanov, it's a shot that had eyes. It's one that I wish Shesterkin could have saw and stopped, but Schneider might have, they might have screened Igor there. And so just like that, it's 3-2 Islanders. So the Islanders keep on, you know, taking that lead and the Rangers tie it up. But here it would stay 3-2 for a while. Through the period. And Romanov has delay, another delay game penalty on the Islanders at 13-38. Rangers power play does not score. And then soon thereafter, after the power play is done, too many men on the ice in the Rangers. But And that was a pretty big spot right there. The, the penalty goal does, does a good job. The Islanders could have made it 4-2. They don't. Score remains 3-2 going in the third. So they're trailing. And I just feel like in general lately, the Rangers third periods have been pretty good in this good stretch. And that happens again. And three minutes in, it's Barkley Goodrow scoring his eighth goal of the season from Goche Harper. Just nice hustle by Goche, and he just throws it on net. And I think it might have went off of Goodrow's leg. Goodrow is one of those guys similar to Kreider, where you, you find that Goodrow gets a lot of those deflection type goals, where it's like, yeah, like it just—he's a gritty type of player. And, and as I spoke about recently. Where, look, Goodrow's got eight goals. Not bad, really. Um, this is someone who, and, and this is, and it's not as if this was a night where he was playing with Sabanich and Panarin. This was with Julian Gauthier. This is, you know, Ben Harper gets the other assists. Like, so 
we're, we're all tied up at three. Three minutes into the period. Then a couple more Islander penalties. And it's Romanov again, hooks Sabanajad at an 808, but the Rangers don't score. Then at 15.07, Scott Mayfield with another penalty. Cross checks Jimmy Vesey at 15.07, but that's unsuccessful. But soon thereafter, Alexi Lafreniere shoots it into the zone. And it's funny, when you think about the kids, Lafreniere, it's like Lafreniere actually does kind of, like, you look at the point totals, they're not terrible. I, I still want to see more from Lafreniere. But this was kind of a, a you know a fortunate point for him. But Keandre Miller deserves a lot of the credit here. He is able to kind of beat Barzell. And I'm not sure if Miller saw Kako or if he just figured, let me throw it in front. But it ends up looking really nice as Kako buries it and makes up for that earlier mistake. Kako is ninth goal of the season. So Kako's goal totals. And let's remember here with Goodrow as well. This is even strength time. These They are not getting power play time. So this is all even strength. It's good stuff. And, and so Kako and Keandre Miller with 14 assists. And that's not on the power play. So with less than three minutes, the crowd goes nuts. The Rangers take a 4-3 lead. And now they have to hang on to it. And they do. They score an empty net goal. It's Vinny Trocek, who continues to do a really nice job. Got off to a little bit of a slow start as a Ranger, I'd say. And he's really finding his game. And he's, he's you know, you feel good about him out there. And it's his 12th of the season. Goodrow with an assist. So three points in the night for Goodrow. And Lindgren gets the other assist. So... Rangers take a 5-3 lead, and that's the score they would win by. So a really big win for the Rangers. It, it, you feel good going into the break. They'll be back on Tuesday with a very big game against the Washington Capitals. It'll be their first game against Washington on the season. We'll see where Alex Ovechkin is at in his chase to surpass Gordie Howe. He, you know, by then, I, I would ex you would think by then, because I think Washington's got one more game. So, good chance that something will still be on the line for Ovechkin, whether that be tying Gordie Howe or passing him. So, we'll see what happens there. Something to think about. But that'll be a good, another good game, right? Rangers with a tough loss against Pittsburgh. They played all right. They really did. And then in this one, they played well against the Islanders and they win. And it's nice for not only the Rangers to get the two points, but for the Islanders to get none. That, that makes it doubly good. So, the Rangers... It's impressive what they've done. Their record now sits in the Metropolitan Division at 19-11-5. And their play at MSG is getting better. It was ugly at one point. What was it? I mean, was it 4-6-4? and four? Might have been that. It was either 4-6-4 or 5-6-4. Now it's 8-6-4. So still not amazing, but getting better. And the goal differential, getting better, plus 20. Like, things are totally turning around for this team. And let's hope that they can continue it out of the break. Two more games in 2022. Like I said, the one home against Washington and then at Tampa. So this will be their first game at Tampa since they were eliminated last year in game six of the playoffs. Now they played the Lightning opening night at MSG. And that was really, honestly, to this point, one of their best games of the season they played. So I'd expect them to be ready to go versus Lightning again. But expect to see Shesterkin continue. I, I would think that Igor plays both of those games. And then maybe we'll see Halak in January. But again, Rangers with a really, really good victory that they should feel good about. They beat the Islanders. And they have now won eight of their last nine. And they will come out of the break back at MSG to take on the Washington Capitals.